Another nice feature that Excel 2007 offers is the ability to name a cell or a range of cells. By naming a cell or a range of cells, you can easily find that location on your worksheet. You can quickly locate and go to the named cell by using the Go To command. You'll find the Go To command here on the Home tab of your ribbon in the Editing group under the Find and Select command. When I select Find and Select, it will drop down into a menu and I can choose Go To from the menu. When I select that by clicking it, it will open up the Go To dialog box. And here I can go ahead and choose any pre-set up names that I might have on my worksheet, as well as any cells that I've recently activated. Notice that A1 with a absolute reference is listed here in this dialog box, and my active cell on my worksheet is here in A1. But if I wanted to quickly go to any named location on my worksheet, I would simply Simply select that name from the list and then click OK and Excel will automatically jump to that named location and here it is a single cell B14 and notice that instead of seeing the cell reference of B14 in the name box up here in the formula bar you see the actual name of that cell. So it's a nice feature to jump to and from on your worksheet. Also by adding names to cells and cell ranges you can use the name in a formula which makes the formula easier to understand when you review its syntax in the formula bar. To create a name in Excel you must first select the data that you want to name. This can be a single cell or a range of adjacent cells. You can even choose non-adjacent cells and set up one name for all the cells selected on your worksheet. Then, once you have your selection designated, you can use one of two techniques. So let's say that I wanted to set up a name here for my sales column, and I want to just call it sales. I will select that location or that cell on my worksheet, and then I can come up here to my name box, select the cell reference, and type in the name that I'd like to use for my location on my spreadsheet. Press enter to set that name, and now this cell has been named sales. I'll do the same over here for tax and then come up here into the name box, highlight the cell reference, and then type in tax. And when I press enter, it will apply that name to F13. And notice that up here in the name box, it takes a minute to refresh, you'll see tax appear. There it is. Also note that once you have two names, or a few names, if you click the down arrow here on the name box, you can also very quickly jump between the named locations on your worksheet. Now the second technique for naming a cell requires the use of the formulas tab in your ribbon. And notice I have a define name as well as create from selection. Either one of these will allow you to define a name for location on your worksheet. I'll go ahead and choose this cell G13 and I'm going to name it total sales. I'll come up here and use define name and I'll select that and notice you get the new name dialog box. So here I can go ahead and type in total sales. I also can apply this to the scope of the whole workbook or to just one of the worksheets that make up my workbook. So you can make the name universal to the workbook or apply that name just to that worksheet. I'll go ahead and keep this to the workbook for this example. You can apply a comment here by typing in the comment that you might want to add to maybe provide more information about a name. And then here you get your reference to that cell location or the range of cells. I'll go ahead and say OK and I've added yet another name to the worksheet. Now there are some rules that you need to be aware of when you set up a name for a worksheet. First of all, the first character of the name must be a letter or an underslash or the backslash. A name can be up to 255 characters in length. No spaces are allowed in a name. Also, you want the names to be unique in the workbook, so you don't want to use duplicate names. And names are also not case sensitive. So those are some rules for creating names in Excel. Let me go back to our worksheet that we're working on here and also show how you can edit and delete a name. Notice that if you come up here to 
your define names group you have a name manager if you select the name manager tool this will open up and present all the names that you've created in your worksheet you then can go ahead and select them to edit the name maybe you want to change the cells it refers to or you can go ahead and delete a name by clicking the delete button I'll go ahead and delete the minimum sales and when I do I'll get a dialog box asking me if I'm sure I want to do this yes I do so I'll click OK and the name is deleted when you're done making your change click the close button so you'll find that names are very nice and easy to use and create as well as manage let's go ahead and apply some names to our project that we're working on what I'd like you to do is open up your sales monthly workbook or if you'd like to open a file that reflects the development of the course up to this point open up 0811 start file this is our sales worksheet that we've been working on and what we're going to do is create two names for our total unit cost and our total sales the sums here at the very bottom of our sales data so go ahead and select D38 and come up here to your name box and let's go ahead and call this total unit cost and then press enter to enter that name and do the same over here on F38 and let's call this total sales and enter that data go ahead and save your worksheet and then just to double check that your names were entered and have been accepted by Excel, come to your formulas tab to the define names group and choose the name manager. And notice that you should see two names, total sales and total unit cost. Go ahead and close that and let's move on to the next movie.